Recently, Jeff Duncan, the Republican lieutenant governor of Georgia, said Herschel Walker was, quote, granted a mulligan in the form of a runoff, an extra four weeks to convince the 200,000 Georgians who pulled the lever for Governor Brian Kemp, of course a Republican, and Senator Warnock, the Democrat, to change their minds. The lieutenant governor joins us now, along with CNN political commentator and former South Carolina Democratic state lawmaker Bakari Sellers. Lieutenant Governor Duncan, let me start with you. With less than a week left until Election Day, really six days now, do you think that Herschel Walker has convinced enough Georgians to send him to the Senate? Well, there's a serious imbalance of energy right now. The, the Warnock campaign seems to be gaining steam and momentum, and every, every time you turn on the TV, there's a Warnock ad running. And it's not necessarily the case the Walker side, right? I, I think, as you just mentioned, there was a brief five-day period where he was kind of absent from the campaign trail. The ads don't seem to be as numerous. Uh, and there does not feel like there's a ton of energy. This all came down to the suburbs. Can he convince the 200,000 people that voted for Brian Kemp but voted for Raphael Warnock in the general to show up and to, and to, and to uh, click on his name? And, and it doesn't feel like that's happening. So you told CNN in the fall that Walker didn't do enough to get your respect or your vote in November. Will you be voting for him next Tuesday? I showed up to vote this morning. I was one of those folks who got in line and spent about an hour waiting. And, uh, you know, it was the most disappointing ballot I've ever stared at in my entire life uh, since I started voting. You know, I had two candidates that I just couldn't couldn't find anything that, that made sense for me to put my, my vote behind. And so I walked out of that, that ballot box uh, showing up to vote but not voting for either one of them. So you didn't vote. Uh, Bakari, Diane Gallagher reported we're seeing record-breaking early vote numbers in Georgia. So do you think that's good news for the Democratic campaign here? Or because we're talking about a runoff here and a really compressed schedule, does sort of that conventional wisdom get thrown out of the window? No, undoubtedly, that's good news for Democrats. I mean, we, we've seen the trends. Instead of having these um, polling uh, data where Republicans flood the zone with just poor uh, polls, what we see now is that we actually have data we can look at. That's the early voting numbers, where they come from in Georgia. Uh, Lieutenant Governor uh, Duncan is probably uh, better than I at telling you what it means when somebody votes in, uh, in Richmond County versus Fulton County or DeKalb County, et cetera. But I do believe that what we're seeing is that Democrats are coming out. I mean, I think I think Raphael Warnock is running the pitch perfect campaign for the moment. And let me also say this. This is somewhat contentious for people um, who may not be familiar culturally with what I'm about to say. But there is a great deal of resentment by black voters for Herschel Walker. There are many black voters who you speak to who simply say that he does not speak or represent us very well at all from the allegations of abuse, from being inarticulate, um, for not understanding basic concepts. And therefore, we do not want him to represent us on the world stage as a United States senator in, in Washington, D.C. I expect you're going to have a large number of black voters come out uh, again for Raphael Warnock overcoming the fatigue and a great deal of young voters come out for Raphael Warnock overcoming the fatigue as well. Uh, Lieutenant Governor Duncan, I want to go back to your decision not to cast a vote uh, in this runoff election. Was your vote gettable by Herschel Walker in this runoff? Was there something he could have done, or what is it that he could have done to get your vote today? Yeah, I think I'm, I'm in the same spot that hundreds of thousands of other Republicans and millions across the country are in, right? We just want real leadership to, to navigate us through the, the mess and mire of what we're seeing play out in Washington, D.C., and and whatnot. I mean, I think there's a couple of easy pieces of low-lying fruit, Run One was push back on Donald Trump and the whole fake election narrative. Uh, secondly, when Nick Fuentes did what he did with Donald Trump and he took the dinner meeting, push back on that instead of hitting the mute button. Those were ways to convince the suburbs that you were a serious player that didn't want to be Donald Trump's puppet. puppet. You wanted to be a U.S. senator that wanted to go do important things and lead, uh, you, you know, using, using big ideas. That didn't happen, and that's disappointing. And I think there's a lot of finger points starting to happen. Look, this is a lot like a locker room, right, after a couple of losing seasons or a couple, a couple of big losses. People are starting to point fingers, and there needs to be a new direction for the Republican Party. And I think this, unfortunately, is going to be one of those moments in time where we point back to this as a catalyst that, once again, allowed us to find real candidates to stand up and win these races. So, Bakari, one of the things you are hearing from Republicans, the senators who are going to campaign for Herschel Walker in Georgia is... You know, keep us at 50-50. No, don't give the Democrats 51 because it helps us uh, in committee strength. Is committee strength sort of a salient 
campaign pitch to, to voters, Republican or Democrats? Well, look, I, I want Raphael Warnock to win this election. And my mama always would tell me to leave well enough alone. And there has been no better message than that of Lieutenant Governor Duncan on why Raphael Warnock should probably be the next United States senator or the inability, uh, better said, for Herschel Walker to actually serve. Let, let me just say that the closing message for Herschel Walker is God knows what. Um, he's he's ill-fitted, he's ill-equipped to be a United States senator. And I think that people are recognizing that. I mean, you also have the level of exhaustion that, that, that Georgia uh, voters have. But, you know, let's add this up. Let's look at it in the balance and the totality of what it is. Tomorrow you have Barack Obama, who is, I would say, arguably the most popular either current elected or former elected official out there on the campaign trail campaigning for Raphael Warnock, whereas you have Donald Trump doing a teleconference. I don't even know what that is, but a, like a tele-rally for uh, Herschel Walker. And I think that actually goes to the point of momentum. And Raphael Warnock has the momentum going into this. And 51-49 for Democrats is a huge advantage. And we know that. I think people know that. But you don't want to go into somebody's household saying, please give me 51 votes for committee assignments. I think uh, Jeff Duncan and I would both agree that things like inflation, immigration, crime, et cetera, are the number one issues. It ain't give me the number of votes I need so that I can get this plush assignment on whatever committee it would be. I think we almost made CNN in history here where a panelist abstained or passed on a question, you know, and deferred the answer back back to the other guest here. Uh, Lieutenant Governor Jeff Duncan, Bakari Sellers, our thanks to both of you. I appreciate it.